Come on, Phil Lewis, where y'all people at? Films, it ain't nothing like the experience of actually working in Jamaica because it ain't work, you know what I'm saying? So for me, when they say rap, me, Ninja Man, and Bounty Killer, and all of us, we was in the dance hall every night. Yeah. And I think the most pleasurable experience for me was to, you know, be able to spend that kind of time in Jamaica as an adult. And as Buster Rhymes working, because I'm out there to not only provide a service, but to contribute to this incredible body of work. And to see Jamaica get represented on a level that it wasn't on an underground level. It wasn't just something for the hood. And a lot of the times, you know, when you see Jamaica, you know, like when you see bad boys and you sort of the, the dudes who play the Jamaican in there, they just look corny. And I ain't disrespecting the movie, but I, I, I never really got a proper representation of Jamaica in a film on a mainstream level outside of the heart of they come, like Jimmy Cliff. So, when I, see that, when I see the way this was happening from the script, you know, I was extremely attracted to it. I was even more fascinated that it, it came from a, a Nick Cannon, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I, I, I would, you know, this ideally we would expect it to come from somebody that's from that. But a lot of the times, the greatest representatives of a culture is the biggest fans of the culture. And sometimes I think we get so overprotective of our culture that we don't allow the people that appreciate the culture to show how much they appreciate it. And I think You know, I'm sorry to be long-winded, but let me keep it really, really 100 with you with how, how much I fell in love with the movie. This, there was a moment, because I was again, I'm in the club every night, I'm going to every dance, every night. And I'm in, the, I'm, I'm in there till four or five in the morning, and my call time is at eight in the morning. So, I'm in the dance, and I'm seeing the cannon, you know, like when you would learn the dance routines in a, rehearsal studio or you trying to be a pirate because you, you don't want to embarrass yourself from fucking up the dances in front of people, especially me and I am kick wide. <laughs> so it's like, I'm in the dance and I might be in there chilling with Beanie and Ninja because most of the time, that's who I was rocking with when I was out there. And we'd be in the dance and we'd be chilling and then you see Nick coming with the dances for real in, in the middle of the that's all why the real actual event was popping with the shooters and the, the hustlers and the this and the that. They came and be out there trying to learn the dance routine and be fucking up. <laughs> and you make your jokes on them and then they'll start the routines over and he'll get back into it until he learns. But he was learning it on the spot in front of a real, and you know, Everybody know y'all people still, you know, representing the proper they're not off the store. I never go off the store. You never go off the store. So it was really brave of him. And that's when I knew how serious he was. It was like, yo, I'm really gonna rep this thing so proper that if I'm gonna misrepresent, I'm gonna feel it firsthand in the most gross disciplinary way possible. <laughs> from the people of Jamaica and the culture. And I was really proud of that. And at that moment, that's when I was like, you know what? Seeing how man is, how much this man is sacrificing to rep this culture on a level that we haven't seen in this dynamic, it was so much more inspiring for me to want to come and bring my A game and make sure that I represented Nick and his hard work and his gamble and everybody else's hard work and just make sure that, you know, we did something that everybody of the West Indian cultural significance can be proud of. So, I think you make the first of the world. Thank you, Mr. Peter.